Hello, this is Anna Laura Brown, host of the Autoimmune Rehab Podcast, where we talk about how to actually thrive and heal your autoimmune condition, rather than just covering it up with pills or changing your diet and hoping you'll feel better one day. We feature solo episodes on helpful topics and interviews with guests who have actually walked in your shoes with autoimmune disorders and or who have years of experience in helping people to thrive and not just survive with autoimmune challenges. I'm a health coach who started this podcast because I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's in 2018 and wanted to inspire hope and transform health for people with autoimmune challenges. So keep listening and let's get you the help and hope you really need. This is the Autoimmune Rehab Podcast. And today's episode, I am happy to welcome Trina to the podcast and Trina and I are going to be having a conversation about the topics of emotional and spiritual healing and how that relates to autoimmune and it's going to be hopefully a little bit of a different conversation we have addressed some aspects of emotional spiritual mind body spirit a little bit but she's definitely got a little bit of a different twist a little bit of a different story to share so Trina why don't you jump right on in and start off by telling us who are you? All right. My name is Trina. I live in Melbourne, Australia, and I have struggled with a couple of autoimmune um, diseases since I was a kid, um, endometriosis and ulcerative colitis. Um, and endometriosis was definitely the one that was the greatest struggle right from the moment of when I was about 12 or 13 years of age I got my period really early and I was just in significant pain for so many years so I really loved listening to your intro there um Anna Laura where you're talking about giving hope it's so important because now I can look back as um a much older woman and I am pain-free and I no longer have the same symptoms that I used to have um, and for me, I have utilized, uh, there, there's so many different factors that I found personally that need to collectively come together in order to manage an autoimmune disease. And I definitely use diet. I definitely use supplements, but one of the things that I've found helped me the most has been, uh, spiritual healing. And I also have a background in traditional Chinese medicine. So I have a Bachelor of Health Science in traditional Chinese medicine. That's So that's just a little bit about me. <laughs> that's awesome. That's cool. So let's flash back here a little bit to, you know, you're 12, you're 13, you're having all this injury, you pain and everything. What did you do first to try to fix it? So um, right before I got my first period, I would... Uh, be in enormous abdominal pain and I would start vomiting and I would get put in hospital and then the doctors couldn't understand what was going on at all I was just this big mystery and then I finally got my first period and it was agonizing and I just got told that periods were painful and then I started to internalize that as believing that there was something fun fundamental fundamentally wrong with me because everybody gets period pain but I had the kind of period pain that would um, result in me turning up in the emergency room and so uh, at first I took pain medication uh, because I would get period pain about a week leading up to my period and then for the first few days of my period but then the pain started to present further and further it would start earlier and end later until before I knew it I had pain through my whole entire cycle and so at the beginning all I was doing was taking pain medication from the doctor when the pain got excruciating turning up at emergency and then emergency would give me um, put me on a drip until the pain recited and that that cycle Anna Laura that went on for years and then finally, um, I was living uh, in Queensland, which is a very beautiful place in Australia. And my partner at, at the time was working, he was a jewellery maker and he was working in a jewellery store. And there was a psychic that worked there. And I wasn't interested in that stuff at all. I was, uh, and he, the psychic kept saying to him, I'd really love to do a reading for your girlfriend. And he would relay that information to me. And I'd be like, no, I'm not interested in that stuff at all. And then one day um, I was like, 
Okay. And she did this reading for me and she drew a picture of my reproductive system, just an outline. And she drew um, some places where she was telling me that um, where I had some illness and then it, it coincided around the time that I'd actually been um, sent to a specialist and I had been given a diagnosis of endometriosis. They did a laparoscopy where they had a look inside and they could see that I had endometriosis. Endometriosis being when the endometrium that lines the inside of your uterus is found in other places in your body. And it grows in response to hormonal stimulation. But of course, it has nowhere to go because when you have your period, you shed it outside of your uterus. But when it's growing in other places, it just keeps growing. And so I was amazed with what she'd said. And she said to me, one day, um, I'll never forget it, one day uh, you, you will heal this in yourself and one day you'll be able to heal uh, other people as well. And I thought she was a bit crazy, to be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah, and... <I'm> sure. <laughs> Well, you know, but it sounds to me like she was more than just, because, you know, there's, let's let's put this out here. There's a lot of people when they just hear psychic, they think crazy. And there isn't, you know, there's a lot of different things out there and there are psychics that are a little bit nuts, you know, but it sounds to me like she was more of like, an energy healer than just a, you know, random run of the mill psychic, so to speak, you know, she actually did have some training and knew what she was talking about. Yeah. Well, she had a gift of reading energy. And the reason that I was adverse to seeing her was that I thought that a psychic was somebody who was going to predict my future and tell me all these things that were going to happen. And I was, I didn't want that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I want to be able to live my life without thinking that it's going to unfold in a particular way because somebody's told me it is, but that wasn't what she was about. She just simply read my energy and then she reflected back to me something that was happening inside of me. And she gave me a different perspective on it and it was empowering, you know, um, because it was hard for me to deny because she knew nothing about me. There's no way that she could have known. And she drew this very accurate picture. And then she told me that I had some kind of power in me. And I'd been told in, you know, power is an odd word, but, but there was, let me put it this way, the whole, my whole life so far had told me that I was weak, and that I um, couldn't put up with the kind of pain that every single other person, you know, most other women were putting up with and that there was something funda fundamentally wrong with me. And my self-esteem was shot to pieces. Oh, I'll bet. Right? Yeah. Uh, and she gave me this bit of information that kind of gave a whisper of hope and a whisper of, or well, maybe, you know, there might be something, you know, I don't know, positive about you in some way. And, and it was uplifting and around that time that that same that same little jewelry store um a woman that was working there said oh I see a Chinese medicine practitioner um and I find them really helpful and so I started going and getting uh acupuncture mm -hmm. and it was like it was like a miracle it took a while but it just help to reduce some of the intensity of the pain. Mm -hmm. And it offered me an alternative because when I was seeing the specialist and I had the lap laparoscopy and I was diagnosed as endometriosis, he put me on this medication that made me put on weight and that made me in induced a menopause uh, situation in me, a woman who was in my early 20s. Yeah. I went into full menopause where they stopped my periods and I felt like I was psychologically losing my mind. It was horrible. And so with the, I started doing more and more Chinese medicine and then I eventually went off that medication because I was getting enough support to help manage my pain. And then it was after that, when I was studying Chinese medicine, that I started going a little bit deeper and going into, because Chinese medicine is all about energy. I started looking sort of at a place that's a little bit deeper to energy, which is consciousness. And, and, and consciousness is more like the data that sits inside of your body from which your biochemistry is being related from, uh, is being created, sorry, from which your thoughts and your emotions and your behaviours are being created. One way that I like to sort of 
say that to people is it's a little bit like think of consciousness as like sheet music you know when you've got sheet music and it's got all these funny little symbols Mm -hmm. and the sheet music is nothing it's just information until somebody takes that information and either with an instrument like I'm doing a little guitar thing here um, an instrument or, or their voice takes that data and turns it into music well consciousness is a little bit like that so I started doing some work um, where I was going in and uh, through spiritual healing started to shift some of the underlying programming in my body and that was when I started to get more traction in regards to reducing um, my symptoms in regards to endometriosis. It did not happen overnight. I had to stick with it. I had to try various, you know, diets and supplements to go along with it. But I eventually got to a place where um, I was symptom uh, free, other than a little bit of discomfort sometimes. And uh, where I wasn't taking any medication. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's amazing. Yeah, I fortunately I have not had to experience into into uh, however you pronounce endometriosis or whatever. But I have yeah. had painful periods, and I have noticed that acupuncture has really helped me as well too a lot. You know, with reducing the pain that I have had, and yeah, I mean acupuncture, like you said, it's all about that chi and that energy flow, and it's. I mean, it's acupuncture in and of itself is basically an energy healing modality, one of many that are out there. Yeah, it's it's one that has this incredible philosophy that's interwoven through it and that has um, mapped out an incredible understanding of the body um, from from an inter, from a energy perspective that is just quite mind blowing to be honest i i'm so grateful that i took the time to study that at university and really understand that yeah that's awesome that's amazing so let's discuss a little bit i know that a lot of times you know there's lately i would say probably in the last i don't know 5 or 10 years or so especially here in the us maybe it's the same way in australia i'm not sure the whole concept of energy healing and energy medicine has become much more of a thing if you will where a lot more people are becoming aware of what it is it gets talked about there's a lot more people doing it that kind of thing how would you say uh, that energy healing is different from spiritual healing or are they basically two words for the same thing uh no they're definitely different yeah um so energy healing is more about changing the way that energy is flowing through your body and or how energy is being created in your body um and con- and spiritual healing does does that but also shifts the underlying uh information consciousness on which energy is actually um, that that tells energy how to flow and how to move and how to create itself. Yeah. So it's at a much and more al- deeper level then, basically. It's just a bit of a deeper level, yeah. Um, and it's spiritual healing is is using a particular type of energy, right? So there's the the lightest energy that you can come into contact with as a human being is spirit energy and we often call it light because it is so light like dense energy is very dense and often when we've got a lot of dense energy in our body it feels horrible we're sluggish our thoughts are negative but light energy is really bright and full of potential and um and lifts your vibration and and helps you feel like there's meaning and there's purpose in your life and that kind of light energy comes from in 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 my uh language we call that spirit energy okay and i personally actually work with spirits who help diagnose a person so like when i saw that that particular psychic she called herself um and she was you know diagnosed me without knowing what was going on that's the kind of work that i actually find myself doing nowadays and so that information that i'm getting i'm getting that from spirit 
is what I say, which I know sounds strange to many, many people, and I totally and utterly get that. Um, but for me, it's just a everyday reality of, of the way that I work. So spiritual healing and energy healing are slightly different. They are both, um, that, that's not to say that spiritual healing is better than energy healing either. I, I don't believe that. There's just a slight difference. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And I know that acupuncture, especially if you, you know, have that training and, you know, really good acupuncture, sometimes are able to even diagnose or figure things out before Western medicine doctors can. I tell people that my acupuncturist caught on to my thyroid issues probably three or four years before I knew I had Hashimoto's and was actually instrumental in my trying to go get a diagnosis. But initially I got laughed at by the first doctor because Oh, well, mm -hmm. I didn't really want to tell her that I had an acupuncturist that was telling me I had, yeah. but maybe yeah. I should have, but, you know, I was a little bit shy about it, but she laughed at me because she didn't think that I had enough symptoms. And then, you know, I ended up going through a couple other doctors, but ultimately, yeah, it was the acupuncturist that caught it first. So, yeah. That's the thing Catch that when that you... Stuff. Yeah, when you're working on an energy level, you can often catch things that are subclinical. OK, so that means that just before they've actually moved into that place where they've really manifested physically. OK, so um, I so people that do energy work such as myself, we are often picking up autoimmune diseases um, and being able to feed that information back to people because we're able to pick up subclin subclinically that there's energetically there is there's something that's not working quite right um even though the person doesn't have a whole lot of symptoms yet and um i've certainly i i remember um where i was sending a client to a doctor and saying tell them that you really need to have a colonoscopy because i could see stuff that was going on in their colon that really needed medical attention mm -hmm. and um and so she was like, what am I going to say to the doctor though? And I said to her, tell her that uh, a Chinese medicine doctor has sent you to get a, a colonoscopy. Now I studied Chinese medicine, what probably about, I started studying about 25 years ago. In those days, if you went to your doctor and said it was a Chinese medicine um, person that had sent you, they would be, yeah. But nowadays, as you said, like there's been a lot of change and there's a lot more acceptance. And so, yeah, she told her doctor she had a colonoscopy where I had seen some growths. There was some growths and um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think there's this concept of an integrative medicine that's becoming much more common where you even have acupuncturists working at hospitals and things. And so it's definitely becoming much more known thank goodness <laughs> you know i think to the benefit of all of us i'm really really hopeful about that i'm really hopeful that um we can have this more of a meeting of um complementary alternative medicine whatever you want to call it and western medicine because both of them are absolutely essential i think uh when it comes to a more holistic um approach to one's health yeah, absolutely. So you mentioned, of course, you know, you went and saw this lady. I mean, I guess she was calling herself a psychic, but she was really more of an energy type healer. And she helped obviously initially with like your physical conditions and your physical pain. How can spiritual healing or energy healing, that kind of thing, how can that help with like emotions and emotional issues as well? Uh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. So one of the things about autoimmune diseases is that for whatever reason, one's own immune system is attacking, if you like, your body, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and producing inflammation, and then that is resulting in um, tissue ill health, and which is resulting in your body tissues not being able to function as well as they could. That's just to really be very simplistic about it. But nonetheless, that, that's really important because. One of the things that immunity is, immunity is the ability to be able to go, okay, what is me and what is not me? And if something is not you, to then mount an immune response and eliminate that from the body. 
And with autoimmunity, there's a lot of confusion in that area. You know, is that me? Is that not me? And then the immune response is a lot more kind of um, haphazard, a bit more like instead of being really clear about what I'm going to shoot and get rid of, I'm just going to and do, do a whole lot at once. Okay. And so one of the things that spiritual healing is really, really good at is helping you to build a relationship with your authentic self. Okay. To start to become a lot more clearer about who and what you are and to start building that relationship with a, a more truer essence of who you and what you are. And then have that start to show up more in the way that you're thinking, the way that you're able to regulate your emotions, the behaviors that you're choosing into, and also your biochemistry. Because a lot of us are very conditioned. So conditioned means that we we lose we lose perspective and we lose relationship with our sense of self because the world's telling us who we are so mm -hmm. like i'm um i'm autistic so therefore the world says that you know has something to say about that i'm a woman the world has something to say about that you know mm -hmm. there's all these things that are coming at me all the time telling me who i can be what i can be how i can be it and we can sometimes start to you know like fall apart um you know like not fall apart sorry but start to kind of collapse under the weight of that conditioning and that's the conditioning that sits out there there is also another type of conditioning that is very pertinent to autoimmunity, and that is genetics, okay? So from a spiritual perspective, you have, a, you have an inheritance that comes into your body from your ancestors, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And that affects your sense of self. So what I'm talking about here is certain patterns that come into your body due to the experiences that your ancestors have had that affect your nature and your character. So um, they affect the way that the biochemistry works, the way that you regulate your emotions and process your emotions, your thoughts, etc. And so spiritual healing is able to go in there and work and do genetic healing and help to change some of that that I call it sometimes baggage that we have inherited from our ancestors and help us to process that and reduce the influence that it's having on our body which again then helps us come back to a a deeper understanding and knowing of who and what we are and we start to radiate that more and then there's more clarity that comes through in regards to well who am I what am I and then that starts to have a very important healthy functional outcome in regards to our boundaries just generally speaking around our body but also the way that our immune system is able to operate. That was a very long answer. <laughs> That's okay. I think that was helpful though. And I think honestly, a lot of the points that you brought out are part of the reason why they say 80% of autoimmune diseases are in women is because as women, we either get overworked, overstressed. We have this certain image of what we need to do as a woman, especially women that have children, even more so than women that don't have children, I think. But it's just, there's all this, these expectations and these things. And sometimes it just gets to be too much, whether it's the stress or it's the whatever it is. And that can cause autoimmune issues, you know? Absolutely. I mean, I, I totally and totally agree with you. And that's a really important point. And one of the things is that in order for you to create that much deeper, sort of more soul-based relationship with yourself, then you need to get to know you, get to know your idiosyncrasies, get to know your needs, be an advocate of those in the world, you know, like the what that person, that person needs, you know, like four hours sleep and can function fine and can eat as much gluten as they like. I can't. Um, I need to have a lot longer sleep. I need to meditate to ma manage my stress. There are all of these things that I need in order for me to be more optimally functioning with inside of myself to have a better quality of life and uh, to, to feel better. And I've got to advocate for those needs. And 
And sometimes we get so lost in that because as women, we're very good at putting other people's needs before our own. Exactly. We don't prioritize self-care. And then, of course, there's the whole issue, you know, with the media and everything else that sometimes tries to make women think that they need to be a certain size, they need to be a certain way, have a certain appearance, all that kind of stuff. And that's it's worse for women than it is for men. And so I think some women that can really get to them as well. Absolutely. And it sets up like this battle inside of us. You know, like with the input that's coming in telling us, you know, who and what we should be and then what we believe and know is is authentic and true and right for us and then we can get caught in that battle land and that is one of the the worst places to be in regards to being able to have that cleaner, uh, cleaner isn't the right word, that clearer, more focused immune response happening inside of ourselves and to anybody out there who's listening to this and saying oh my gosh I find myself in that space a lot oh no now I'm really worried and I shouldn't be in that place then my message to you today is that everybody has a degree of that so I don't want you to increase the battle by um, going into stress and worry and going oh no I'm not allowed to be like that I want you to offer yourself compassion, right? That's one of the really fundamental tenets of spiritual healing. The more we create that relationship with our own spirit, the more effortless and easy it is for us to be compassionate with ourselves because, of course, we're like that. You know, of course, there is always going to be a level of that inside of us because of the world that we're living in. But be compassionate and kind and understanding and empathetic to yourself about that so that you can just do the best that you can in regards to knowing what your needs are and meeting them. That's awesome. So if somebody's listening to this and they're thinking, you know, hey, I want to try to explore a little bit of this, you know, either this energy healing, this spiritual healing realm, what would be the very first thing that you would tell somebody that they should do? Mm, Let me think about that. Okay. I think that acupuncture is a very safe space to start uh, because you have somebody who has as training um, and that training has a level of standardization in it Um, and yeah so I would say that that is a very good place to start and in Australia I'm sure it's very similar in America we we have um, the I I can't remember the name has just um, eluded me but there are um, yeah there's like the acupuncture group of Australia or whatever that you can look at their website and then there's a lot of practitioners that are um whose names are posted there if you want to tip your toe into spiritual healing then it's really important that you just do a little bit of research on the the person and just make sure that they it feels like there's an alignment for you Mm -hmm. okay and 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 trust that you know, really, really trust that. Go, there's a resonance here that feels right for me. So I'm going to go along with that. If the resonance isn't there, then uh, go somewhere else. And yeah, and, and also know that with these types of energy and spiritual healing, sometimes you can go and have a session and things just change really, really fast. And then other times you need to, uh be going a little bit more regularly and it's a little bit more of a gradual change and so it's worth hanging in there uh so I guess that's what I would say that's awesome so and I would take it that if somebody wants to reach out to you they could do that as well and we'll include your information in the show notes so anybody that wants to reach out to you they can do that absolutely and one thing to know is that spiritual healing is not bound by space I have a lot of clients that live overseas um in Europe and, and America and uh yeah we we do zoom sessions for spiritual healing so yeah awesome cool well is there anything else you'd like to share with anybody that's listening to this uh just uh if you find yourself here listening to this podcast um I think that's that's really great that you're being proactive in regards to educating yourself more about your autoimmune condition and I, I just want to say that hang in now. 
Um, I, I'm in many ways I can reflect back and be very grateful for my autoimmune conditions because they actually led me down a path that I'm very grateful that I went down. And in many ways, they've been my teachers, even though at many times they've felt like they've been a total and utter pain in the bum. Um, and so I, yeah, I, there's a lot of hope for you. That's what I would like to say. Awesome. That's great. Well, thanks so much for sharing with us, Trina. And again, like I said, we'll have her contact information and her links in the show notes. So if you'd like to reach out and have a conversation with Trina, please feel free to go ahead and do so.